Hiya. Uh, so next up on our video list is talking about the normal distribution. So in essence, the normal distribution is looking at a slight generalization of the binomial distribution, but a little more curvy. Uh, so the best way to kind of do this is look at an example uh, and kind of go from there. So the example that we're going to work with is an example we actually had seen before um, with a binomial distribution. So in this case, what we had is we let the probability be one half. So we took a coin flip and we flipped it 10 times. And this was the kind of distribution that we got for the number of heads. Um, and what we want to do is basically what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to make it into a nice curve. So we want to make it into a nice curve. Um, and it turns out we actually kind of can. Uh, so this nice curve is actually called the normal curve. Um, yeah, the normal curve. Uh, and it's given by this equation. So the normal curve is given by the equation y is equal to 1 over sigma to the square root of 2 pi e to the minus 1 half x minus mu squared over sigma squared. Um, nice, exciting little formula. Uh, so normally, if you're used to the, you've probably seen this curve before. It's actually normally known, like in common language, this is known as the bell curve. So normally when we're talking about classes, right, when you hear um, teachers talk about a bell curve, uh, this is really where this is coming from. It's a normal curve. So it's a normal distribution, mainly because it's supposed to look like a bell. I don't know how, but you know, back in the day, they had those bells that looked kind of like this. Anyway. Uh, we're not going to talk about the 18th century. Uh, so basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to take this curve. So if we look at this curve, what we actually get is something like this. Um, and let me, can I copy this formula down? Yeah, let's copy this. Uh, let's paste it here. Oops. We'll do it with a finger, I guess. Yeah, get rid of you. Oh, whatever. Paste. There we go. Um, and so this formula actually gives us this curve here on the right hand side. Uh, and what you're going to notice is here in the middle, we kind of have mu. So it's centered around mu. And most of these variables we've seen, right? So x, we already know this is a variable. Y, um, y we also know this is just a variable. A lot of times this is seen as f of x, right? You're probably used to seeing this as a function f of x. We'll leave it y for now. Uh, pi, this is the normal constant, uh, 3.14159265358979, uh, etc. Uh, <laughs> I do know pi for a few digits, it's fun. Uh, then we know the exponent, right? Uh, e here, this is 2.71828, 18285. Uh, this one I don't know off the top of my head. That actually looks, this might be wrong. This looks like I copied. 18281828. That looks anyway. Uh, I'll have to double check that number. That might be wrong. Uh, but this is our constant e. And the only thing that we're missing is oh, and then we have mu, right? So we know mu, that's our expected value. So mu, if you recall, this is normally just equal to np for the binomial distribution. Uh, and the only thing that we're missing really is the sigma. So the sigma is the only thing I haven't really defined. So what is the sigma? The sigma is known as the standard deviation. So you've probably heard this countless times. And if you're anything like me, standard deviation makes zero sense. You're like, I like, no matter how many times you see it, you're still like, I just don't get it. Like it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. That's just me. So you can be like me. You can not be like me anyway. So the way to kind of think about the standard deviation is if you look at your bell curve, it's going to be centered around some number mu, which is your expected value. And you can kind of see this expected value is going to be peaking. It's going to be the top of the peak, right? And then this standard deviation is basically going to give you like some little or yeah, it's going to give you some distance away from mu that's the same. So this distance here is the same as this distance here. 
this distance here is identical, right? So these are all the same, um, etc. So this is giving us um, kind of intervals in our distribution that we can talk about in a nice way. Um, so the best way to kind of think about this is actually just a continuous histogram. So normally when we have histograms, right, we have little boxes. But now just think of them as a continuous version where whenever we have some point, right, so this point here, the uh, probability of this point is basically given by that line, right? So it's just that height. Um, so in essence, what we're talking about here is you take your box and you make your width infinitely small. So this should remind you of something that's a little exciting called integration, right? So when we're talking about integration, a lot of times we're looking at an area under a curve we start off with our Riemann sums, we start off with little boxes, and we make these boxes smaller and smaller and smaller until they become infinitely small. So basically what we have is the mu tells us how high it goes, the sigma tells us how far spread out it is. Um, this little constant in front, so this little thing here in front, the one over two sigma, one over sigma two pi, right, this little thing here, which you can see here in the front. Uh, this is there just to make sure that the area under the curve is equal to one. So in other words, if I were to take my function from minus infinity to infinity, um, f of x dx, this is equal to one. So if I didn't have that constant, then I would not be able to do this. Um, so although we have a curve, this isn't necessarily going to define a distribution right away, right? Because if you think about it, if I take any point and I look at its height, well, the width is zero, right? Because it's infinitesimally small. So I don't really have a distribution at any given point. So what we need to do is we actually need to define what this distribution is. So what this distribution is, the normal distribution, um, the normal distribution with expected value mu, so we need to define, we need to give these values when we're defining this. So the normal distribution with expected value mu and standard deviation sigma, we need both of these parameters, is just going to be the distribution over the x-axis, um, defined by areas under the curve, in other words, integration, right? So we're just looking at areas under the curve, and that is going to give us um, our distribution, our, um, yeah, our distribution. Now, there's a standard way of kind of doing this. So when mu is equal to zero, so our expected value is equal to zero, and sigma is equal to one, then we call this the standard normal distribution. Um, and that's basically it. So basically what we have, um, is a standard normal distribution and yeah so this basically helps define what this is uh so i'm going to stop the video here because it's hitting a, a nice time in the next video we'll look at another way of looking at this curve um and a little different way of defining this basically known as the cumulative cumulative distribution function uh, so I will see you in the next video.